everybody, it's Doug here. Welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to episode three of our Darkest Dungeon campaign playthrough. We are about to hit the, our second run through the dungeon with our Crusader, our Highwayman, our Vestal, and our Plague Doctor. Uh, it, was, it was a pretty interesting go last time. It was, it was uh, not that easy, um, but uh, we managed to get through it. We came back to the Hamlet. We didn't beef up the Hamlet at all. Like We have the ability to actually increase or make the hamlet better, but we didn't. We didn't do that. We just did some things to make ourselves better, uh, heal up. Our plague doctor still has a little bit of damage, but we've all walked away with some curios and some other things that we have that'll help us in this run. And I need to continue to remember them as I hit turns. We also got one experience point out of the whole thing. You only get up to three in a, a session, so. Hopefully we can get a few more in this one. Now, one thing I didn't do before we started was uh, to roll our provision dice. Uh, we're going to get eight of those, and uh, those will be our tools that we have to uh, uh, play, uh, to use while we're in the dungeon to help protect ourselves from various things. Now, here's the thing about these, the provision dice is two dice per player. I have four player or four characters, rather. Just one player, but four characters, and that's what we're going to do. So let's see what we get here. Uh, oh, this is great. Uh, so we got two torches. That is awesome. I'm just going to put these over here. We got a whole bunch of bandages, so if we run into some bleed, we're going to be okay there, aren't we? Um, I think we're going to get a another... We got two torches, so I'm going to get a shovel, which is a tool. And I think we need at least one food, right? I mean, geez. And one food... And that's going to be our, our supplies for right now. And we have the ability to get some more supplies as we go through the dungeon. But we're going to have a crazy time of it because we have to get through this dungeon. Our current quest is uh, to scout ahead. Uh, we get one XP for every, or, you know, one XP for every two rooms cleared. So I'm thinking, I mean, this, this dungeon layout is not wonderful for this adventure. But uh, we're going to get one really good scouting, maybe two, because we can scout here and get two rooms as well. But I think the rest of it, we're just going to have to go for it. So, let's do this. We are going to take our first move. Now, we are not going to scout ahead in this first turn. We're just going to move, which means we have to then roll. Each uh, character has to roll two of the, uh, whatever they call them, dice. <laughs> that uh, gives us bad stuff as we head into the dungeon. Two, four, six, seven, eight. We need one more. And we're going to roll these uh, two at a time for each character. We're going to start with our Crusader. Let's see what he gets. Two Curios. That's uh, interesting. I don't know if that's good or bad for us because we do have some torches. Uh, blank and a, a Stressful Darkness for the Highwayman. A Trap and I think that is Rubble for the Vestal. We do have a Shovel. And then last but not least, two food for the Plague Doctor. The Plague Doctor likes to eat. Uh, she has uh, been ravenous, and that's probably why she still has some damage on her. But she's a, a clotter, and she's a night owl, so it might be might pay off for her there. We'll see. All right. We have to resolve these before we can do anything else. So we're going to take these, and we're going to resolve one at a time. I think we're going to use a torch on the first one. That will get rid of those, and that means we're going to get a curio for the Crusader, and we're just going to get the good stuff from the curio because we used a torch to make sure we avoided any catastrophes. It's a suit of armor. It says, an antique suit of armor stands amidst the, rub the ruins. You see something shining from the gap in the helmet. The gap, brother. As you reach for it, the head guard slams shut, uh, drawing blood. We had this one before. You break free, and with the trinket in hand, but now you need to stop the bleeding. Well, the only person that doesn't have a trinket right now is the Vestal, but... None of this bad stuff's going to happen. Only this good stuff. We're going to get a positive quirk for the um, the Crusader. Just double check that in the light to make sure I'm re seeing that. It is a positive quirk, not a negative quirk. So I get those out. And we're also going to then um, get a trinket, which is going to a level one trinket. Okay, let's see what we get here. All right, we get a... Uh, fast healer. Oh, this is great. Every time we heal, we get additional plus one healing. That is going to be a trinket, or sorry, a cork for our crusader. We'll just have to move some of this stuff around a little bit. Okay, and then uh, we get a trinket as well. So let's get the trinket deck out. I got the first level trinkets here. Um, we can give them a quick shuffle and see what we get. 
we get uh, archery ring. Eh, not so good. Accuracy plus two when in the archery position. We want to we want to shuffle some things around uh, because we definitely want um, probably our but our plague doctor has the sage book, which is pretty good. Plus two accuracy when in the last position. I guess we can give this to the vestal actually because the vestal doesn't have a trinket. So we'll uh, give that trinket to the vestal. She is actually in the right slot for that to trinket to be effective, so we'll do that. All right, that was one of <laughs> one of the what are these? What did I what did I have these here? I guess they slipped when I put them back. All right, um, that was one of the curio items that the crusader has. So I have a question for myself here: Do I want to burn the other torch? Or I don't want to save that torch for the Highwayman's massive darkness. I think I'm not. I think I'm going to burn the torch here to take care of this other curio because I don't want bad stuff for me. I just don't want bad stuff. So we're going to uh, get another curio and see what we get. Let's see. The Iron Maiden. Getting the, these, are, these are turning into repeats. Uh, a rusty Iron Maiden stands against the wall, clasped shut. Uh, you feel tense as you try to uh, uh, open the devilish uh, contraption. Alas, you pin yourself onto one of these spikes by accident. You, uh, you curse your luck as you break free, feeling nauseous and sick. Okay, we would get uh, a bleed, a bad, and this is all bad. There's nothing good on this, so it does nothing. It would have given plus one stress, a negative quirk, one bleed token, and a disease. So we are not going to do that. That is awesome. Um, glad we, uh, very glad we used the torch on that second curio. Okay, now we got to do the highwayman. The highwayman is simply going to take two stress, uh, which is something we can do. And uh, I don't know if you, you probably do recall, but we have these wonderful cards that show us what happens in these situations, right? So here we go. So if we get the massive darkness, or stressful darkness, we consume a torch or gain plus two stress or minus one. We can go minus one on the torch. We're going to go minus one on the torch right now. That's going to be okay. Since we don't have anything else that's going to do that, that'll solve both of the dice for the highwayman. Now, we have rubble and a trap. Both of those require tools, but we're going to use the tool on the rubble for the vestal. And then we're going to roll on the trap. We have to, it's an eight or less. Hopefully it doesn't crit. A seven, so we will take the damage. The trap damage there is uh, two points. So we're going to take two health on the Vestal. Not so bad before we hit our first room. That's okay. We can live with that. And uh, that's and then we then that's it for her dice. We have solved all those. Now we got two hunger. We're going to take solve one with the food that we have, and then the other one um, we can't solve with food because we don't have any left. So that means we are going to uh, suffer two health. So the Vestal or the Plague Doctor is back to seriously damaged with <laughs> five out of 11 health already on him, uh, damage already on him. Okay, so that is it for our, our uh, trek through the hallways. We took some damage and stuff, and that wasn't great. Oh, good. We're going to do a big battle right off the bat. I guess uh, I'll clear the way. We have a layer that we're going to be walking into right now. Now, what does a layer do for us? You know what's interesting? Um, on the cards, you notice what's missing? The layer. <laughs> so I'm like, ah, no layer there, but I know what to do with it. We get, we get in a big old fight. That's what happens. Okay, let's uh, get this out. We're going to have a big layer battle. Okay, first thing we have to do is get a room card out. I'm finding that this is uh, a table space uh, monster as well. It takes up quite a bit of space in the, on the table for us. Let's see what we get. We get the old abbey. Okay, um, if we land on this mark, we're, we're feeling the presence. Heroes ending their turn here suffer, oh gosh, uh, one stress per negative quirk. None of us have a negative, well, actually, high, our highwayman has a negative quirk. And um, plus one healing hero level per positive quirk. Well, we got a lot of positive quirk going on. So we just don't want the highwayman there. Everybody else is good to go. We're going to get that tile out. That's going to be tile nine, the old abbey. Let me uh, get that out, and I'll have it on the table. All right, here is the old abbey tile, as you can see. And the spot that they're talking about is right here and here. So there's two locations that, that uh, will uh, heal us when we stand in them. Now I also got to get some chests out. Let's see, I'll just take this one, put it here. Uh, 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 there's a bunch of them. 
Take this one, and there's are there, there two chests or just one? There's two, but here and here. And now we gotta get some monsters out. Now remember, our monster pool is dwindling because uh, as we kill off non-undead monsters, because we're facing the Necromancer, they don't come back. Uh, they get out of the game. So here are, here's the monster deck. Let's see what we get first. Uh, Brigand Cutthroat, okay. Well, we have one of those already out. Uh, let's see what the next one's gonna be. A Bone Courtier, we do not have one of those out yet. And that means, so the, this guy has, says front, so he goes in the front, but this one says back, so that's gonna be our rear guard or enemy right there. And I know you can't see where I'm putting them quite yet, but you will in a moment. Uh, then we have a Brigand Fusilier, Fusilier uh, a gun guy, right? So he's gonna go in the ranged position because he's also a back uh, person. And then we got the Bone Rabble. So they are carting around with two undead, these brigands. They probably were friends of theirs, ex-friends of theirs, and this basically this is what this uh, tableau looks like right now. Okay, and we'll go through them as we take our turns. Okay, but let me get the monsters out and get them on the board. All right, and here is our setup for our battle, our very first battle in this, uh, this uh, mission. Now remember, every two rooms that we clear, we get to... Uh, gain an experience point. So we want to try and clear as many rooms as possible and stay safe and alive. That would be helpful. Um, so we're going in with our torch at four, which means that everybody gains a plus one crit bonus. Not necessarily that good for us either because that they, the monsters also get that. Now what we're going to do next is we're going to get the initiative cards and we're going to start to shuffle them up and you can see that they're monsters and heroes. Make sure they're all facing the right direction. That would be helpful. Okay, and then we're going to shuffle them and uh, start drawing to see who gets to go first. Hopefully we do because our guys, if we can kill some before they start doing damage to us, maybe we'll do a little better than last time. We got hit a couple times before we got the opportunity to attack. And uh, that's, I think, one of the only drawbacks to this system is sometimes you get you get really unlucky and just have a bad moment. Okay, well, let's put these right here. We're going to draw our first one. It is going to be a hero. Good job, heroes. That means our Crusader is going first. Now, I did switch some things out with our Crusader. He's going to get two actions, I think, for his first action, since he's got these two right here. Um, well, yeah, let's see how much... The, so the Bone Rabble has six health, and the Brigand Cutthroat has eight. So we know that we cannot actually kill them without a crit from the Zealous Accusation, but it will hit both of them. I think that's worth it for our first action. Now, we're not in the space that's going to heal us with positive quirks. We happen to have a positive quirk that also happens to give us plus one when we're healing. So we definitely want to try and get into that space with them. Uh, that space can take four characters. It might be worth me moving the Crusader in there and smiting the um, Bone Rabble instead. That would be his, his full turn. Uh, I don't know. I mean, uh, the, the Zealous Accusation is not going to kill them. So maybe we'll do that. We're going to move right to here since we can put four. Now only one can get in there, but I don't think those other two are going to want to move their ranged anyway. And then we're going to attack the Bone Rabble with our Smite ability. Let me show you that. This is Smite. has a range of zero, attacks one target. Crits, uh, crit would be 13 damage, and um, it has an accuracy of 9 for 7 damage, and does plus 1 damage versus Unholy. The Rabble, the Bone Rabble, is in fact Unholy. So what do we get? A 7. Does the bone the bone rabble has a one dodge? No, it has zero dodge. The yeah zero dodge. So uh, boom, we hit it for seven points, which is enough to actually kill it right off the bat. How cool is that? Now we don't get anything for killing it. We just get to kill it. But that's okay because that means there's going to be one less monster to take an initiative turn, right? Yeah, that's pretty good. That's much better. And we, that was our both of our actions. So that is done. And the Bone Rabble, who had... I'll just show him to you since you probably didn't see the card, or maybe you did last time. He had uh, six health. He moved one. He was immune to bleed. We didn't bleed. He has zero dodge. And these are his abilities, and he would have been using um, number one, which is the... Uh, was it? Bump in the Night, which is just a, a pretty basic attack. But it, it's not going to get to do that. So we are in good shape there. Now, next up... It says heroes suff heroes ending their turn there suffer plus one uh, per negative uh, stress per negative quirk and plus one heal per hero level per positive quirk. Well, good news, we don't have any damage on us, so we don't have to worry about that this round for the Crusader. 
but that is going to be the end of his turn. Let's see who goes next. It is going to be the cut the brigand cutthroat. Let's see what the brigand cutthroat can do to our character. So first off, it's going to attack the most crowded space, which is going to be right here. And it is going to use, uh, well, let's see let's, what position is it in. It's in the defensive position. So we have to roll a die, actually, to see what it's going to do. It's going to either do uh, well, a one or a two. <laughs> a five. That is going to be a actually a number, yeah, we're going to do one. We should roll lo lower because that would have been interesting. Okay, so we're going to do slice and dice. It uh, needs an eight to hit, does four damage, and two debuffs. It can hit two targets. Uh, it will hit the highwayman and the Vestal in this case, because they are the two next ra highest ranking targets in this crowded space. Now, the the, the uh, attack requires a an 8. Um, our, see, our Highwayman has a dodge of 1, so it's a 7 for the Highwayman, and our Vestal has a dodge of 0, so an 8. So let's just see what we get. A 4, so it hit both of them. Uh, that's no fun. It is going to do 4 damage and 2 debuffs, so let's get that out. Uh, four damage to each of them. That's a bummer. I was hoping to avoid some of this damage. That actually puts the Vestal at some serious damage. But this is good. We're going to have four damage on the Highwayman and two debuffs. Now, what does a debuff mean? It means that I'll show you in just a second because they have handy dandy reference cards. That is going to go on the Highwayman, and then these two debuffs are going on the. I got to make sure I look at their quirks and st or their abilities and stuff too. Um, neither, nobody crit, nobody crit on him, and nobody, he didn't crit on anybody, well, he hasn't gone yet. I'm just looking, the torch goes up, get to, okay, I'm just double checking all their quirks and abilities so I don't miss out on what's important. Our Vestal has six damage already, uh, but that is the turn of the uh, Cutthroat Brigand. Let's see who goes next. It's going to be a hero, which means our Highwayman is going to go. Good. We can probably, do I want to try and take out that Brigand? Um, I can... Yeah, he's got damage on him, so I want to move him into that space. But I can do a pistol shot on one of the ranged enemies since the brigand's already gone. So we're going to move here. That puts three people in this space. That's his first action. Now, he can move two, two positions. But, I, well, yeah, let's move in here because I want to start heading toward those treasure chests. So he moves two positions over there, and he's going to take a shot. And I'm looking at the two enemies, and I think it's best if he shoots the Bone, bone Courtier. Bone Courtier has seven health and one dodge. Um, and it's the first, it's first level. So uh, with that, and remember he has a debuff. And what, let me just show you, there's these really nice reference cards that I want to keep showing off because they're actually really well done. They show all the conditions. And so you can see that a debuff here, as long as the character is debuffed, others gain plus one crit to their skill targeting them. So we have to remember that the Crusader, or sorry, the Highwayman and the Vestal are debuffed. But hopefully we can take out the Bone Courtier. We're going to do it with a pistol shot. Uh, we're, we're going to have to crit to take it out. But the crits are two right now, so we possibly can do it. It's a range of one or two. So he's going to spin around and shoot the Bone Courtier with his pistol. Um, that is the only ranged attack he has. Let's see if he can do it. A 10, he misses. Pew! Okay, so he shoots and misses the Bone Courtier. That is no bueno. And that is his second turn. Now, uh, one of these does come off immediately because uh, it was his turn and then uh, we're going to go to the uh, whoever's next let's see okay it's going to be our monster so it's gonna be the um, the brigand uh, fustier a fusilier fusilier rather uh, he is right here so he's going to turn let's see what it's going to do uh, he's going to shoot the most crowded he's got a range of two so that's uh, one, two. He can shoot into... Well, they're both the same. So he'll shoot right here. Nope. Most crowded of heroes is going to be here. So he's going to shoot into that backspace. That's kind of crazy. More debuffs coming our way, right? Um, and, uh, yeah. <laughs> We're going to have debuffs on there if he hits. Now, he needs a seven. Uh, both the Vestal... Yeah, okay, the Vestal has... Neither of them have any um, dodge. So he's just going to shoot with, well, is he going to shoot with that? He's, yeah, he is. He's in the defensive, or the uh, ranged position, so he will do that. And that is going to be accuracy 7 with 2 damage if he hits, but it's also going to debuff them again. So hopefully he misses. A 3, or 5 rather. He does not miss. So 2 more damage on our heroes. Ouch. That's, that means, uh, let's see, what is our, 
one, two, three, four, five. Yeah, um, our Plague Doctor is at seven damage, and our Vestal is at nine of 12. They're, they're not doing too well right now. And they both get two more debuffs. They can't do anything about that. So uh, when, on their, when their turn comes up, they'll lose one, but that's not gonna be that helpful. Um, because it's several turns, we're probably going to be done with this fight by the time that actually comes around. Okay, let's see. That was the Bone Fusilaire. Okay, next up is going to be the monster, the last monster going. Um, it is, so that is going to be the Bone Courtier right here. Let's see what that fine fellow does. He's pretty nasty. Now, he is in the uh, last position here, so he's going to do this uh, Tempting Goblet on who? Uh, the most stressed. The most stressed is our Vestal. Uh, so what's his movement? He can move three. So he's definitely, and it's got a range of two. He doesn't need to move at all. He can just do it from where he's at. Okay. So I don't, you know, I know that, that there's some line of sight things here, like he, he can go around here, whatever, but I don't, he might need to move here to shoot them. I'm just going to say that's true because this looks like it might block line of sight. You know, it's pretty unclear on that. Okay, uh, so he moves and he, he does his action, uh, which is going to be, a, it needs a 10, so it's pretty good. And it's going to add one stress and three damage onto our Vestal. So he is going to uh, take a swipe at the Vestal. Uh, it needs, he needs a 10 or less, so he, he's going to hit unless something crazy happens. A 2, remember that our Vestal is debuffed, so that was a critical... Um, because, oh no, it's only one. Oh, thank God, because it's a zero. I thought we got a crit there, but it's crit zero. So with the debuff, it, no, it's two because of the torch that is a critical. So it's going to be five damage. <gasps> oh no, we are at zero with the Vestal. Boom, the Vestal is on death's door. Oh my gosh. Bang. Okay, so we're going to get out one of these wonderful dice and see if we lose our Vestal when the Vestal's turn comes up, which I only have two, the two heroes need to go, like they're gonna go next. Um, now, if I get a monster, it's the one that died. So our Vestal's gonna go. <laughs> I'm nervous about this. We have to roll, hopefully we don't lose our healer this early in the game. Oop. Oh no, oh no, 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 boom! Our Vestal is dead. Just like that, our healer, healer's gone. We gotta get in that healing space right away. Um, oh, by the way, our our our, um, our brigand, or, or sorry, our highwayman is in that space. So two, uh, he gets uh, two damage, or is it one? Oh, he gets it's one, but he has the fast healer. So whenever he gets to heal, he heals an extra one. So he's down to one, two health. But our vestal is dead. Our first casualty, y'all. First casualty. You got to see what happens when they die in the middle of the dungeon. Can I replace him? I'm not sure. I got to check. Our no, new hero will not join us until the battle is over. But that means that the uh, Plague Doctor is now in the ranged position instead. And sadly, the first casualty of war, our Vestal, is down. That means we got to get another healer. I'm trying to think of which character does healing. Um, okay, next one is going to be our Plague Doctor, which means this is no good because the other monster is already dead. So I'll just put that out. Our, our Plague Doctor is going to go. Take a debuff token off. Boom. I'll well take these tokens off the Vestal as well. And uh, let's see. What's the Plague Doctor going to do? Well, uh, we can do a Plague Grenade. That does that actually attacks. Well, maybe Noxious Blast might be better. But we're going to move first because we want to heal at the end of this. We can get three people in here. So we're going to move there. All his stuff is ranged. So it's uh, pretty good, actually. You know, I can... You know what I probably would have done is before I moved, I think I would have attacked the brigand from here with, do I, do I use blinding gas or just kill it? Uh, he doesn't have any damage on him, so I'm probably not going to kill him. I think we're going to use blinding gas and see if we can stun him. So he's going to attack this guy here first with a blinding gas, which uh, hopefully will work. And uh, let's see if we can get a nice roll there. A five, so it does work. That means that the brigand has stun for one turn. It will not act next turn. That is good. Okay, and then for his second action, he's going to move. When he lands here, he's going to heal one. 
Okay. Uh, we're going to have to use that because that's our only source of healing at this point. Luckily, we're not too damaged. Uh, the one that was damaged the most was the Vestal, and the Vestal is gone. So, um, in the order of things. Now, I noticed I didn't pick characters that shuffle a lot. Uh, not for our first game. I didn't feel good about that. So, we are going to continue on with our next round. We are now into round two. Our light is still at four because the Vestal didn't get to buff, buff the light up a bit and is now gone. So, um, man, this is so rough. And now we're out of position, so this trinket is no good for the the Plague Doctor at the moment, until we get another character in. Okay, well, uh, we'll have to see who that's going to be. I don't know. We'll have to see. we got to finish this fight first. All right, I think I've shuffled these up. Oop. Keep shuffling, I guess, because I had that one out of order. All right. Who's going first? One of the villains. The Brigand, who is stunned. So the stun token comes off the Brigand. And that's his turn. Next up is, oh gosh, we're just going to get creamed on us, aren't we? The Fusilaire is going to go next. Again, he is going to, uh, he is in the, um, now in the defensive position, so he's still going to use his, uh, but or whatever, barrage fire, blah, 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 fire. Let's see, it is the uh, blanket fire. Uh, it needs a seven to hit. Neither of our heroes have any ability to defend against this, so we're just going to roll and see if we get, we get lucky. An eight, he misses. So he shoots into the space with our, at range two, he shoots into the space with our two characters and misses. That could not have worked out better for us at the moment because we're in kind of a hot, uh, hot mess right now. Okay, let's see. Is it going to be another monster? No, we finally get to go. So the Crusader's going to go. Uh, he is going to probably attack the, the Brigand as well. Um, he could do his bulwark of faith. Self, it targets him, so that means it'll draw some fire. Adds plus two to the torch, means it go back up to five, and gives him two armor, which means he takes less damage. Or and just kill something. I think we're just going to kill something. He's going to use his smite ability, um, and actually, he's going to move. He's going to move to here. He's going to smite the bone courtier because why not? Uh, that way, we'll be able to kill it. The bone courtier has seven damage. We're going to do seven plus one, so it'll kill it. Uh, whereas this guy has eight and we won't be able to kill it. So let's try that. Hopefully we just, if we hit, great. We do have a, uh, we can make a crit on this, but I don't know if we will. A nine! Did I hit him? I don't think I did. The Brigand has a dodge, no, the Courtier has a dodge of one, and this, the Smite has a nine. So we missed with the Smite. That was both of his actions. Now, he's in the healing space, but he didn't have any damage, so we're going to continue on. Wow, what a rough fight this has turned out to be. Okay, uh, our Highwayman's going next. We take the last of the, his uh, debuff tokens off of him, so he's not debuffed anymore. That is good. And then he's going to Wicked Slice the Bone Courtier. Uh, the Bone Courtier is, is uh, resistant to bleed, so I don't, bleeding isn't going to be that effective. A Wicked Slice can kill him in one shot. He has a 9. The Bone Courtier has a dodge of 1. Oh, he did hit. Okay, cool. Oh, man, an 8. Okay, that does seven points to the to the bone courtier, courtier, whatever you want to call him. And that is him right there. You see, he has seven health and one dodge. So we it, we had a nine to hit, reduced to eight. We just hit, and that guy is dead as well now. Um, so that is going to be it for the monster. So if we draw another monster card, they don't get to go, and it is another monster card, so it's just going to go away. And then next up, we have the plague doctor. Plague doctor is going to go next, uh, and we are going to do a blinding gas on, I think, the Brigand Cutthroat again, until we can get to it. So Brigand Cutthroat is going to get a blinding gas. We need a 9. The Brigand Cutthroat has a dodge of 2, so a 7. A 2! That is that going to be critical? We got 1. Uh, it doesn't matter. It doesn't critical. It just stuns. So that's okay. Um, but we've stunned him again. Boom! He keeps hitting him with this gas. Now for a second action, I think he will uh, then maybe play grenade him at the same time, right? Because we we get two actions. He can play grenade. Just looking to see if he's done anything interesting. Um, no, nothing that would affect... I was looking at his trinkets and stuff, just making sure we're good. Uh, his Sage's book is not helpful right now. Play grenade. He can still do it from the archery position. So I think he will. Yeah, it's a 9 to hit. It's going to do a bunch of blight. Maybe we can start to kill this guy. So let's roll that. We need a 9. 
It'll only do one damage. On a crit, if we roll a one, we get a crit, does two damage, but does a bunch of blight. Now, it does hit two characters, but we don't have two characters we can hit, so we're just going to do this. The seven on the on him, he's got a, so it's a nine, eight, seven, he's got a two, so we did hit. Uh, for how much blight are we going to do? Let's take a look at this. So he had a nine. The, the brigand has a dodge of two, so that means a seven, so we did hit. We're going to uh, do a stun on him again. Oh, he's already stunned. I'm sorry, got the wrong thing. Uh, we're talking about our uh, noxious blast, right? Yeah. Um, yeah, here, no, no, no. Play grenade. It was play grenade. Okay, so we did one damage to him, not a whole bunch. Probably should have done the noxious blast. It's one target, it does more damage, and it does more bleed, but, well, I already made the call. So, um, it's going to do three blight for two turns. I should have done the other one. I wasn't paying attention. But three blight for two turns will, be, uh, will do some serious damage on him. So we'll put that on there as well. He's starting to take a beating. Okay. Oh, man, that was it for our characters. We got two guys left. Um, and the bone... We have just got the two uh, brigands left to fight. So we got three heroes and two brigands. The one brigand is stunned, so we know he's not going to do anything. That was very helpful. I'm looking at our trinkets and stuff to make sure... We don't need anything. We're fine so far. Wow. Okay. And I, I, we did get crit, but we were the only one in the space, right? Yeah. Okay. Oh, and he is here, so at the end of his turn, he does heal another uh, one of these. And the this token would have come off his. No, I, yeah, I didn't take it off. Okay. Let's see. Lots of things to remember. Let's see what we get. Okay, our Crusader goes first. Um, he will move here for one and attack the Brigand Fusilier. Um, he is going to use his Smite ability, which is this one right here. So that is going to be a 9 to hit. Uh, the, he has one dodge, so he's 8 or better. He's not unholy, so he'll just do 7 damage, which is not enough to kill him, but close. 4, so he does hit. It's not a critical, uh, but it is a hit for, for 7 damage. So we'll get that on him. Uh, let me see, five, six, seven on him. And he is one away from death. Too bad we didn't do the um, blight on him. Okay, let's see. Next up is going to be the highwayman. Man, do I want who do I want to go after on this? Okay, here's what we're going to do with the highwayman. We're going to move one to here. <sighs> do I take a chance? I think I am going to take a chance. And I'm going to pick up this treasure as our second action. What is it? It's a provision die. That is good because we used all, all but a couple of our provision dice. Um, and they were all, where are they? Where are our provision dice? I moved them aside so I wouldn't miss them. Um, there they are. They're over here. Uh, we had three bandages. <laughs> so make sure they stay away with us here. What do we get? We get a, a food. I'll take it. Okay. So that was, uh, that was one of the weaker treasures, but that's what we got. All right, now um, that was his turn, so we're going to go again. I'm taking a little bit of a risk here. There's two enemies to go. Okay, the first enemy goes, he is stunned, so he does nothing. And then the, the second one, we still have our Plague Doctor. Nope, it's going to be the uh, Brigand Fusilier going first. Uh, he has, let's see what he's going to do here. He is going to, he is in the what position now? He's in this position, so he's still going to do his blanket fire. Um, it has a range of two. Exactly, so he has to be two away. He can't attack. He can't. He can actually. He can attack our high women. One, two, one, two. You can attack there. He's going to attack the most crowded, but that doesn't make any difference. So the next, the one in the next rank would be the high women. So he's going to attack the high women with a seven accuracy attack. That means that he has a six because the high women does have one dodge. A seven. He misses. I don't think he's hit yet. That's wonderful. And then our plague doctor gets to go again. And I think what we'll do with him is we're going to move here. Actually, I would have had to move to blinding gas this guy, but yeah. We're going to move to here, and he will blinding gas the, um, the brigand again. And so that when the brigand just is going to blight out, poison out, right? So we'll see. Blinding gas is going to do a 9 or less. A 10. We actually failed. He, he missed with that. It would have been actually a 7 to hit. 
because of his dodge. So he missed that, and that is the end of the round. We're on to round three. This is, uh, if we go one more round and we can't kill these guys, our game is done. For, oh, not our game is done, but this battle's done, and we would have not done very well with it. Okay, here we go. Last, we got one more round. We got to kill them this round, both of these guys. I think we can do it. I think we can do it. They're both hurt, not badly, but the blight is going to start taking its toll. So let's see what's going to go first. The brigand um, cutthroat is going first. What's he going to do? He is going to, uh, let's see, he's in this position, so we're going to roll a die to see what he does. A six, so he's going to continue on with his slice and dice. Now, there, it says most, it's most crowded, so he doesn't care about that. Has a range of one, so he's just going to attack our Plague Doctor. Ugh, okay. Not great. All right, uh, the Plague Doctor it is. So, the Plague Doctor doesn't have any dodge, so it's going to be an 8 to hit. Let's see what happens. A 10! He misses, man. I miss, he's missing as bad as we are. So he tries to slice and dice the Plague Doctor. He also takes 3 more damage. So he's at 4 damage now because of the Plague. But, uh, so he's at 5 total damage because he already had 1 on him. So he is now hurt and he is gone. So he's not going to do anything else this turn. Who's next? One of our high our crusader crusader's first action is going to be pick up this treasure chest. Okay, that means we get to roll a d10 and multiply it by two in gold. Hopefully, we roll high. A two. <laughs> well, we get four gold. I'll take you know, I'll take that. Four gold's better than no gold, right? So, uh, let me see. I think I have one. I have a couple ones. One, two, three, four, five. So I'll take them. there. We go. All right, we have we actually are going back. We already have 20 gold when we go back to the hamlet. Not bad. Uh, and then for a second action, he's going to smite this guy because it'll probably kill him. If we hit, it's a 9. The guy has a 1 dodge, so we need an 8 or better to smite him. Do we want to use his ability? Nope, we don't need to. Let's see. A 2. Is that a critical? Uh, it is not a critical because we only have 1. But it is a hit for 7 points of damage. He already has 7. He's dead, so that is the end of him. Now, he's going out of the game for this session because he uh, is not undead. The undead are not uh, are the only ones staying in the game when they're killed, but he is removed from play. Oh, sorry, wrong guy, Fusilay, Fusilaires. He's right here, he's removed from play. Okay, then that is him, he is done. Let's see what else we got. Well, we know it's gonna be our highwayman next. He is going to, he's gonna move here, because it does have some damage on him, so he'll heal when he gets there. Uh, or at the end of his turn, which is good. Um, and then we're going to do, let's see, he's got this warrior's cap. Um, we could use it to gain plus two accuracy when in defensive position. He is in that position, so I want to bother. This guy has, I mean, pretty good defense. It's two. Let's do that wicked slice. I think we're going to use it. Why not? We'll use our trinket. Boom! Now it means we're going to have to take this hit if we're going to to get it back to a good state. But it's going to give us plus two accuracy, so we just need a nine, a three. Uh, three is uh, still not a critical, but it is a hit, and that is going to do seven points. So five and seven is enough to kill him. He had eight. So he is dead, and we have completed our battle. We have killed another group of, char of, of enemies, but we had a death in between there. So this episode is going to end right here. I need to contemplate what hero is going to come back into play. Uh, on the next round, and we will see who joins us in the dungeon. Now, this is going to cost us one of our tokens in the Hamlet, one of our first two tokens, so that will go away for us. And we're going to have to think about that as we and try and be more careful. Losing our Vestal is bad. That is so bad, because uh, that is one of the best healers in the game. I'm going to look and see what other characters have some good healing skills. Um, well, let's take a look. Let's see who we got. Uh, I think it may end up being the... Uh, Musketeer, because I think the Musketeer's got some decent healing. Uh, but here's what we have choices of. We have the Bounty Hunter, the Hellion. They're both not healers. Um, we have, well, we know what happened there. No Vestal. Oh, we could do the Jester. Hmm. Jester might ha He's a more of a stress healer, and he moves around a lot. The Arbalist has some healing. We may do the Arbalist. Um, the Grave Robber, I think, can heal herself. The Occultist has some healing, but it comes at a price. There's... He can do damage. And then we also have 
Uh, I don't have it, her cards right here, but we do have them. It's the uh, Musketeer, because that was an extra character that came in the game. So we will have to get that out if I choose with that. Choose that one. If you have an uh, if you have an opinion, the Cultist, the Musketeer, or the Arbalist are probably our best bets. Uh, which would you like us to choose? Because our poor Vestal is gone. Goodbye, Vestal. She is dead. Uh, she goes into the corpse pile. All right. Well, guys, we're gonna pause there. When we come back, we'll be venturing to a new room, but we'll have a new character. So if you do have opinions, please upload them. I may film. Not enough time to make that decision. We'll see. But uh, take care, and I'll talk to you in the next episode. Bye-bye.